Hi everyone, I'm Danny Walker. Welcome to my channel. I was Miss Montana USA 2018 and I'm also a pageant coach. So today I'm going to talk about what not to say in an interview. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe, hit that notifications bell so you can tune in each week for new content. Also follow me on social media at Danny Walker. The first one is verbal pauses. People call these things crutch words or filler words. So I hear a lot of girls walk into an interview and use the word like way too many times or um or one that really gets me is when they finish all their answers with so yeah can you imagine picking a title holder and letting her do a media news interview and all of her answers end with so yeah does that sound good for the brand no that sounds crazy eliminating those words is so important the other thing along the lines of filler words that i see a lot is girls that begin their answers with the same word or phrase so for example you'll ask her a question and a contestant might say definitely or absolutely over and over again i have heard girls say that for every single answer not good ladies, not good. So we gotta practice eliminating all of those extra words. Next point, don't be negative. This is especially important. If you have a platform, a cause, or something that you advocate for that is near and dear to your heart, that's near and dear because it personally affects you. Let's say that my platform is the American Heart Association. And that's because my grandfather has had multiple heart attacks, which is actually true. So if I walk into an interview and all I'm focusing on is the negative, all I'm focusing on is all of those days that I spent in the hospital with grandpa, like how sad I was the entire time, like how terrible that whole experience was. And that's why my nonprofit that I work with is the American Heart Association. I might just like throw that in there. It just really puts a damper on things, right? Sometimes girls do this right away when they walk into an interview. So let's say that your pageant allows you to present an opening statement, like introduce yourself. Girls get really deep and really dark real quick. Do not set the tone for your interview as too deep or too dark. Think about that. Have you ever talked to a stranger and they share something a little bit too personal with you and all of a sudden you're really uncomfortable? You're like, oh, okay, like, I don't know how to help you with that problem and now I just feel really awkward about this. I've experienced that. I'm sure you've probably experienced that too. So that's not a good feeling, right? Let's not do that to our judges in interview. So if you're going to talk about something that's near and dear to your heart that maybe makes you sad, you need to figure out where your line is. You need to know how much you can talk about in that interview before you get too sad and bring things to that dark place. And you need to create a positive spin for it. You got to be positive. You got to go in there and say, okay, these things happened to me. I learned from them. And the good part is fill in the blank, whatever it is. So you got to have that positive spin because it makes everybody feel really awkward and really uncomfortable. And then they're just sort of like, oh, I don't know what to do to make this better for you. Don't do that to a judge. Don't do that to people. If I'm talking about things that are helping you to see pageant interviews from a new and different perspective, then please comment eyes opened in the comment section below. I want to know if these are new things that you just really haven't thought about, maybe haven't heard about, or if they're going to be able to help you really prepare in the best way possible for your next pageant interview. Please don't rehearse your answers. Oh my gosh. Sometimes I'll ask a girl a common interview question or another judge will, and the sound of her answer is like, I've been asked this question at my last five pageants, and I know exactly what I'm going to say to you, and I'm like, and that's why you're here today. That's why you didn't win those last five pageants. It's because you, you sound like a parrot. You can memorize answers to an interview and you can sound great. Like the content can sound really great, but basically you're just a parrot, right? Like we can teach a parrot how to memorize things and memorize phrases and words, and there's nothing special about it. What you want to be is your authentic self. You don't want to sound rehearsed. You don't want to sound like you're reading from a script. You want to sound like the person that your best friend loves that your mom and dad sees every day that, that makes them proud. You want to be that person in an interview, not a parrot. You can familiarize yourself with answers. You can get comfortable talking about certain things in interview in regards to common questions. But what I would say is always think of everything in terms of bullet points, not word for word. 
Memorize the gist of something. So then if you want to reference it, you have that on hand. Lastly, I'll say is don't give one word answers. Please don't do this. It's so uncomfortable for a judge. So sometimes I'll ask a girl a question and she'll give me a one word answer. And because she did that, I will move right on to the next question. And she's just tanking her score that way. So if she gives me that one word answer, I'm not gonna say, well, why do you believe that? Because my winner already knows that she's going to answer the question and explain why she believes that. Oh, another thing that drives me crazy is when you ask a girl a question and she immediately talks about her platform or something that she advocates for. Like you'll ask her a really, really random question. Like, how would your best friend describe you in one word? And she's just like, oh, my best friend would describe me as funny. And funny thing is I have been volunteering 50 hours a week for the past five years. And you're just like, no, please don't do that. Ladies, I get it. It's important to talk about what you want to do during your year of rain. It's important to share about the causes that you advocate advocate for, but let me tell you this, being a volunteer doesn't make you my winner. It's not a requirement. I have judged pageants and I have picked girls who it was her first time competing in a pageant because she had qualities of a title holder and maybe she didn't volunteer. I'm okay with that, but I know that with the title she'll have opportunities to do so. Like I'm not even concerned about her being a volunteer before the pageant. And so many of you come in and think that if you tell me how many hours that you volunteer, that somehow that qualifies you to be the queen and it doesn't. It doesn't. I think it's great if you volunteer in your community. I think it's great if you're involved and if there's something important that you want to share about if you were to be selected as the title holder, but it's not required. So don't always lead with that. It just sounds so forced in an interview. Sure, like look for that opening, look for that time when you can share about that, but do not force it to happen in that interview. Thank you so much for sticking around till the end of this episode. As a thanks to you, if you click the description down below, there's gonna be a link. Click that link and you're gonna be able to download my top 20 interview questions. So these are questions I ask or I hear all the time in pageant interviews for all pageant systems. And I think that every contestant should be prepared to answer these questions in an interview. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope that it has opened up your eyes from a coach and a judge's perspective. I hope that it's gonna help you prepare for your next pageant. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, hit that notifications bell so you're not missing any new episodes episodes as well as like this episode and share it with your friends. If you're watching on a mobile device and you loved it, then please do me a favor, screenshot it, post it on your live stories and tag me at Danny Walker. I want to hear from you. And while you're there, be sure to follow me on social media as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode. I really appreciate all of your time. Love you and hope to see you at the next one.